morning everyone and welcome to our second ever Gateway Online. We're so pleased to have you with us. together we're going to be doing these Sunday morning sessions online every other week um, in the coming term and we'd love for you to join us um, for each and every one of them um, please like join in with us this morning comment in the comment section below we'll try and reply to you if we see you you're commenting there um, we're going to have some worship led by Rachel in a bit Lauren is going to speak to us about Jesus being the best friend that we could possibly have and then she's going to pray for us at the end so just encourage you this morning to just be quiet in the space that you're in. And we're just going to pray and invite Holy Spirit to come and be with us this morning. So yeah, Holy Spirit, I ask that you come and be near to everyone who's watching this this morning. That as we watch this alone in our own houses, um, we would feel like we're together and we would know that we're united in you, Jesus. Amen. <laughs>
Jesus, thank you so much for your love, for your unconditional love. Thank you that you're here with us in all the confusion and the worry, that you've never left us or forsaken us, Father. And I pray we would hold true to you. Just bless us all, Jesus, in your name we pray. chase in this world or try and uh, get a hold of to fulfill us, to please us, to make us happy, to bring us joy. Nothing compares to you, Jesus, to knowing you and to being known by you. Thank you, Jesus. What a wonderful saviour. Amen. Oh, thank you to Rachel and the band there for leading us in worship. Well, hello again, guys. Welcome back to our second Youth Sunday stream. It's so good to be doing these and it's so good to be connecting with you. It was really fun kind of chatting along. Anna and I were in our house the other week and we were chatting along and saying hello to you. So when, when we were messaging, it wasn't just me, it was both Anna and I messaging and saying hello. So do keep your comments going in the chat there and keep that community. Um, and I'm so looking forward to us meeting together really, really soon. Well, today I want to talk to you about Jesus. <laughs> um, now this kind of probably is like, Lauren, why are you talking to me about Jesus? I know about Jesus. Um, but I just want to kind of now and over the coming weeks, kind of as our team speaks to you, just talk to you about Jesus and, and who he is and, and what he really means to us as Christians and as believers. And also for those who don't even know Jesus, that he knows you. Um, and so I just want to ask you a question now. Just want to kind of get you thinking. Have you ever thought to yourself, that person is better than me? They do things that are better than me. They're a kinder person than I am. They're more caring. They're more considerate. They're more thoughtful. They serve more. They're, they're better at, they can, they can lead worship or they're really knowledgeable in their Bible or just the way that they are with their siblings or their parents or their friends. They're, they're better than I am. Well, let me say to you, First of all, about that, comparison is a thief of joy. Roosevelt said that. And then the other side is that sometimes we can do the opposite and we can be like, oh, did you hear what he said or what he done or what she said? Oh, yeah. We can start to think, oh, that's a really bad person. Well, we kind of, what we do is like, we put people on this kind of like badness scale, right? Of like, what's really, really bad and um, what is what's good and we put ourselves somewhere kind of on that scale and we'll put that person somewhere on the scale and put that person somewhere on the scale but with Jesus he doesn't do that there is no scale Jesus doesn't have a badness scale and actually there's somebody that I want to talk to you about that people around this person in the bible were kind of putting him on this bad badness scale and kind of putting him down the lower end, like really didn't look at him as a good person, thought he was quite a bad person. His name is Zacchaeus. He was a tax collector, which meant that basically he went around kind of getting money off of people and getting their taxes and his his earnings, his wages was a result of kind of the extra that he got. So that was his job. People didn't really kind of like him at the time. And then Jesus comes along and he meets him. So I want you to turn with me now, if you will, to Luke 18, 1 to 10. So we're going to Gospel of Luke, second half of your Bible. Luke, oh, sorry, I said Luke 18. 
I meant Luke 19. Luke 19, 1 to 10. Okay, it says this. Jesus entered Jericho and made his way through the town. There was a man there named Zacchaeus. He was the chief tax collector in the region and had become very rich. He tried to get a look at Jesus, <clears throat> but he was too short to see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree beside the road, for Jesus was going to pass that way. I feel you, Zacchaeus. I'm a bit of one of those people. Go to gigs, trying to see up, can't always see. I see why he did that. When Jesus came by, he looked up at Zacchaeus and called him by name. Zacchaeus, he said, quick, come down. I must be a guest in your home today. Zacchaeus quickly climbed down and took Jesus to his house in great excitement and joy, but the people were displeased. He has gone to be the guest of a notorious sinner, they grumbled. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half my wealth to the poor Lord, and if I have cheated people on their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Jesus responded, salvation has come to this home today, for this man has shown himself to be a true son of Abraham, for the son of man came to seek and save those who are lost. So good, so good. So, like I said before, tax, tax collectors were Jews who worked for the Roman government, which ruled Israel um, at that time. And that time of kind of um, Jesus where, where he was living. Their income came, um, came from what they could get from other people beyond their quota that they were kind of asked to get. So they'd lie and make up amounts that they, as they went along. And, and Zacchaeus even says, I will give back whatever I've deceived from people. So that's going to be a lot. Um, and Zacchaeus was therefore a liar and a thief. And that's how he was seen by a lot of people around him. And although he was short, don't be deceived, although he was short, he was quite kind of like a um, like a confident man. And, and he was actually now a chief tax collector. So he'd really worked his way up. So he'd like pushed his way through there. And he's now this chief tax collector. And so he's like super notorious around like where he was from um and he doesn't actually mind being hated in fact he quite likes it he quite likes kind of being a bit of a gangster a little bit of swag bit of a yeah bit of a road man that's him um and so he's kind of there he's you know loving life got it all sorted and um Zacchaeus kind of would have grown up hearing about the kind of prophecies about someone coming so he would have heard about like all his life as a Jew the prophecies that someone is going to come so of course when he comes Zacchaeus being Zacchaeus he's like I've got to get in there I want to get in on some of that action so he hears about him and of course he wants to be there so he goes and he climbs this sycamore tree which like don't think of him in kind of like modern day clothes like he'd have been wearing robes right so kind of like wearing a skirt and he's like climbing that tree and anyway use your imagination so he's climbing this tree and um because he just wants to be this meet this famous person he like wants to get on the action um and he climbs this tree and he's above everyone else and he's there and he's like oh let me see what's going on and then Jesus calls him by name. He says, Zacchaeus. And like Zacchaeus must have thought like, I'm in. This is my moment. He knows who I am. He knows my name. So it's like, yeah. But actually, if we look at the Bible and we look at any time that Jesus calls someone by name, it's actually a really intimate moment. And when he calls someone by name, he kind of like looks into them. And he looks through them and he sees them and he sees who they truly are and who they can truly be and not how everyone else sees them. And of course, how does everyone else see them? Well, everyone else sees Zacchaeus as this bad person, but not Jesus. And what does Jesus do? He says, come down, come down and be with me. And he's like, what? What, what me? You, you want me? And so he comes down and he says, yes. And he says, and now I'm going to come with you to your house. Now, at this time, that would have been like mind blow for all the people there. So like, what? Why is he going to like 
eat because that's where they're done it's jesus he loves eating in people's homes or having people over to eat or eating on a field and a hill and making a picnic he loves eating with people so this is what they've done he'd eat with people so everyone around have been like what on earth is going on why is he going to eat with him well it's because jesus sees him as different and he calls him by name and he goes to his house and says in this moment i'm going and zacchaeus must be thinking this is my moment i'm famous i've made it and little does he know that his whole life is going to change. Now, what's interesting in this story is that two things have two things aren't told to us. So one, we don't actually know how long he's there for, whether he's there for an hour, a couple of hours, like the whole day. We don't know. And the second thing we don't know is we don't actually know what Jesus said. But what we do know is that Zacchaeus changed his life like turned it completely around and for forever. So what changed in him? Well, he had a few moments with Jesus. He was with Jesus and Jesus wanted to be with him. And the truth is, Zacchaeus isn't just that one person. I'm Zacchaeus. You're Zacchaeus. We've all got bad in us. We all get things wrong. And just as Jesus wanted to be his friend, he wants to be my friend and he wants to be your friend. God didn't stop with Zacchaeus because he was up a tree. He stopped because he wanted to be with him. Jesus loves seeing a life turned around and a relationship with him. He doesn't want actions. He wants you. He doesn't want religion. He wants relationship with you. He told him to hurry and he tells us the same. He's saying, hurry, hurry and be with me. Come down, come near. In less than 24 hours, this man Zacchaeus goes from traitor to a son of Abraham. Then he finishes with this one line in verse 10. And he says this about himself. The Son of Man came to seek and save those who are lost. The religious people at the time um, would have thought he was, he was only coming for the chosen few. But Jesus said over and over that he came for the broken, the bad, the addicted, the bound, the deceived, the lost, the hurting. Like I said before, sometimes we are like Zacchaeus. And we've done things that are wrong and for a while and there's pain there and there's hurt there. But Jesus has come and he came not to condemn, but he came to save and he came to have a relationship. He wants to be your friend. Jesus made a point of um, seeking out sinners and befriending them. He was God and he declared by his actions that he did not condemn even the worst of sinners. If our definition of sin is doing bad things, then I think we can pretty much all say, JC, that's me. Jesus came to reveal a God who divines us, not by our actions though, but by his love. We love because he first loved us. Jesus was obsessed with showing people mercy, obsessed with showing people grace. I get things wrong and I need his mercy and I need his grace. Even in this day, there are things I've done in this day, things that I've said, things that I've thought. I need Jesus and I need him close. I need to be with him. He's not my judge and he's not your judge. He's your friend and he's your rescuer. Don't hide from him in shame or reject him in self-righteousness. Don't allow the opinions of others to shape your concept of Jesus. Get to know him for yourself and let the goodness of God change you from the inside out, just like Jesus did with Zacchaeus. Jesus was a friend to Zacchaeus. Jesus is a friend to me and Jesus is your friend to you. He doesn't yell at you. He calls you by name.
And I believe that Jesus is saying to you today, whatever your name is, I'm calling you. I'm calling you by name. I know you. Come, come and be with me. Come, I'm your friend. Can I be yours? I'm just going to pray now. God, I'm so thankful for every single one of our youth. I'm thankful for their lives. And I know that you're thankful for their lives. And Jesus, we are thankful for your life. We are thankful that you came, that you are not a distant God who sits on your throne far away, that you created the world and that you left us that you are a God that came into the world and that you are a friend and that you are Emmanuel and Emmanuel, Emmanuel means that you are with us, that Jesus, you are with us. So I pray right now for you, wherever you are, that you would know that Jesus is your friend. Can you do something for me now? Can you just put your hand just kind of over your heart and a hand over your mind? And just pray with me now and just say, Jesus, I thank you for your life. Would you come into my heart and would you come into my mind? I welcome you into all that I am and every thought that I have. Thank you, Jesus, for giving me your life. Thank you, Jesus, for being my friend. Amen. If you're someone that's just prayed that prayer and you're feeling right now, Holy Spirit just kind of resting on you, you might be crying, you might be shaking, your breathing might have changed slightly, you might be in a room with other people and you're thinking, what do I do? There are other people around me right now. Just take yourself off. Just have a moment with Jesus. And just let him carry on speaking to you about the person he sees you to be. Because someone else might see you as different, like people saw Zacchaeus as different, but Jesus sees you and he calls you by name. And if you are experiencing anything right now, then you can just um, drop us a, an email or get onto Instagram and drop us a message on Instagram or pop something in the comments now. And uh, we would love to chat to you, to pray for you. We can get on a Zoom in the week or go on a walk or take you out for coffee. We would love to talk to you more about Jesus if that was you. Thank you so much for coming in. It's been such a pleasure and I can't wait to see you soon. Have a fantastic week. God bless.